Okay, here we go. Today we are looking at the classification of connective tissue. Our target, you can see, is that I'm hoping that by the end of this you'll be able to describe the structure, location, and function of the various types of connective tissue. So uh, we'll just start right now. Uh, first thing we should make sure we know is where does all this connective tissue come from? We remember drawing this earlier in class. We learned about the gastrula. Um, there are three layers, what we call the germ layers, the ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. You see that blue arrow right there? Mesoderm is what gives rise to all of our connective tissue. Um, there is what we call the mesenchyme and mucous connective tissue. We're going to focus all of our efforts on the mesenchyme because it's what forms all other types of connective tissue. Mucous connective tissue is really just going to be for supporting the developing fetus, not that we're going to really study that that much in this class. All right, so we're focusing mainly on mesenchyme or the mature connective tissue. So, right, so mature connective tissue, our very first one is called loose connective tissue. It's our first category. Uh, fibers are loosely arranged. We'll see a lot of cells and a lot of fibers. Our very first one is areolar connective tissue. Areolar connective tissue is the widest distributed connective tissue. It's all over the place. Uh, it contains all three fiber types, so it's got collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers. Uh, there's our little picture of it. You can actually see those black fibers are the elastic fibers. Those big, thick pink ones in the background are the collagen, and the reticular fibers are those kind of wispy ones you might be able to see. Kind of adjust your lighting if you'd like to see those better. Um, you can also see the cells, those little nuclei all over the place. Um, example of areolar is the subcutaneous layer of the skin. Um, it's kind of like a, it's what binds organs together, kind of holds things together. When we dissect our cat, we'll see lots of this tissue all over the place as we are removing the skin. Um, this is a kind of an example of it, this guy wrapping up these boxes. The plastic wrap being similar or analogous to areolar tissue. All right, our next tissue type that's still loose connective tissue. It's called adipose tissue. Now, adipose tissue is fat storage tissue. Uh, adipocytes, or those are mature fat cells, carry a triglyceride droplet. Okay, so easy to recognize this tissue. It looks, I feel like it looks like flagstones. Uh, the big white area inside is the uh, triglyceride, and the nuclei is actually crammed off to the sides. Okay, uh, and there's a fun image, um, Brad Pitt grabbing some fat from a liposuction place. Uh, but yeah, adipose tissue is just fat. Okay, it's energy storage. Our third type of loose connective tissue is called reticular tissue. You could probably guess which type of fiber is going to be in reticular tissue. That's right, it contains reticular fibers, and it is supportive in function. An uh, example would be the stroma of the liver and spleen. If you hold a liver or a spleen, it actually has mass to it. Uh, you squeeze it, it actually kind of repels your fingers. It's not like an empty plastic bag. It actually feels like it's got substance. Um, reticular tissue looks similar to this. Uh, you see those dark reticular fibers um, and nuclei all over the place in this tissue. Analogous structure would kind of be like steel girders, kind of holding up a bridge or holding up a building. Uh, again, it's supportive in function. That's reticular connective tissue. All right, that's it for loose connective tissue. Now let's take a look at dense connective tissue. So dense connective tissue, you see more fibers, less cells. That's kind of the rule, more fibers, less cells. So we will not see as many nuclei in the dense connective tissue. Our first dense connective tissue is dense regular connective tissue. Uh, it is built for strength in one direction. The collagen fibers are arranged in parallel. That means it can be pulled in one or two directions, but not in all directions. So an example would be like your tendon or ligaments. For example, let's think about your Achilles tendon. Uh, it only gets pulled on by your calf muscles in one direction. It never gets pulled laterally. Um, so uh, it looks similar to this. You can see all the fibers are parallel. All right, those little dark smudges are actually the nuclei, the cells that are kind of embedded in between. And a good analogy to it would be like this steel braided cable. Again, good for being pulling in one direction, but it would tease apart if you started pulling it right and left. Um, if you tried to like anchor it, it, it kind of would pull itself apart. So good in one direction. All right, next type of dense connective tissue would be dense irregular. You probably guess it's going to be strong in multiple directions. The collagen is not parallel. It actually goes in every which direction. Um, example would be the subdermis of the skin. 
you actually saw a lot of this when you were looking for that stratified squamous epithelium. This is all underneath the skin. This allows your skin to be pulled in multiple directions um, without tearing. Uh, and a good example would be like a safety net, right? Somebody gonna fall on this net here, it would catch you. Uh, the force could be transmitted in all directions. So that's dense irregular. Our third type of dense connective tissue is elastic tissue. Now, elastic tissue contains elastic fibers. It's going to recoil to its original shape. So places where you need this would be in your lungs and your artery walls. Okay, As your lungs inflate, the elastic tissue is what's going to cause elastic recoil to occur where the tissue comes back to its original shape. Um, it's going to look very similar to that dense irregular. On a microscope slide, it'll look almost like the same slide. It's just now you see these dark elastic fibers that are staying black. Okay. And a good example would just be a trampoline, right? Trampolines come back to their original shape after you jump on them. All right. Our next category of connective tissue is cartilage. All right. Cartilage is basically just a bunch of collagen and elastic fibers that are embedded in something called chondroitin sulfate. That's the ground substance that's unique for cartilage, chondroitin sulfate. Okay, got it underlined there. Um, our first type of cartilage is hyaline cartilage. It's probably one of the easier cartilages to recognize. It's the most abundant cartilage in the body. It's smooth in texture because the fibers are really, really thin. In fact, on a microscope slide, you won't even be able to see the fibers. An example would be um, anywhere you have joint movement. It covers the ends of your bones. Uh, when people end up with arthritis, it's because the hyaline cartilage starts to actually rub off or thin, so they get something called osteoarthritis. Um, the slide, you'll notice it kind of looks like a purple smear with little eyeballs in it. Uh, and again, you see no fibers. This would be very, very smooth, kind of like Teflon coating, if you will, um, on the outside of your bones. Uh, I have a little image of a mortar, mortar and pestle. They're kind of smooth, right? They, uh, we wouldn't want them to be grinding, so it's not a rough surface, but it's a very smooth surface, okay? Um, in fact, all your bones, your skeleton is actually made of hyaline cartilage first and then turns into actual bone, calcified bone. We'll learn more about that in Unit 4. All right, let's take a look now at another type of cartilage called fibrocartilage. By its name, you could probably guess it's got bundles of thick collagen. It's very strong, and it's used to cushion joints. An uh, example would be your vertebral discs, little shock absorbers in between each of your vertebrae, and also the meniscus of your knee. Okay, so it's uh, going to stain blue, and you see those red cells, the nuclei that are kind of maintaining and those big, thick blue fibers are the collagen fibers. Uh, an example for an kind of analogous structure would be this um, pole vault pad. Okay, cushions. Uh, yeah, basic kind of idea of fibrocartilage. It's all one word here. All right. Our next type of cartilage is going to be elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage. Uh, you'll notice it's uh, different than elastic tissue, and you better be very careful on the test. If you write the word elastic. I will always assume you meant elastic tissue. If you mean elastic cartilage, you better write the word cartilage. Okay, this is flexible and it's similar to hyaline cartilage. It'll look very similar to hyaline cartilage. It just has more elastic fibers. You find this in your ear and in your nose. It's what makes your nose, when you push on it, it flicks back into normal position. Or your ear, it flips back to where it should go. All right, and you'll notice it kind of looks purpley. It's got those little eyeballs, kind of like hyaline cartilage, but instead you do see a bunch of this black webbing, those dark elastic fibers. All right, and a slinky is our little example for the uh, elastic cartilage. All right, our last types of connective tissue, we have bone. Uh, it's basically just calcified cells locked inside something called a lacunae, and we will see more about lacunae later on. Um, basically, more bone histology is going to come in Unit 4. For right now, all I need you guys to do is be able to recognize bone tissue. It looks like nothing else. It kind of looks almost like tree rings. You see that big dark center spot? I want to make sure that you guys are clear that the center spot here, try to bring the mouse cursor over it, this is not a cell. This is something else. This is the central canal. An individual cell would be this little dark spot here, or a little dark spot over here, or over here. Okay. There's lots of little cells kind of round around. It kind of looks like the tree rings. Those are the individual cells. So be careful when we're drawing this. Do not label the central canal as a cell. Um, again, use your book as a guideline for that. All right. And our last type of mature connective tissue is liquid connective tissue. 
uh, and that would be blood and lymph. I have no slides of lymph, and lymph is just kind of the uh, fluid that, um, your plasma basically that leaks out of the tissue and gets recollected in your lymphatic system. Um, but blood, we've seen, you should be able to recognize this very easy. We have red blood cells and white blood cells. Um, you are not going to be asked to know the difference between a monocyte or eosinophil, neutrophil, basophil. All I'm expecting you guys to recognize right now is blood cells. Okay? So that's all of it. Let's go ahead and do some review questions. You can pause the video when you want to here so you can get a chance to think about your answer. Uh, first question. If a tissue receives strain in one direction, which type of connective tissue could best handle this type of stress? Think about your answer. It would be dense regular connective tissue, like a tendon or a ligament. Dense regular has the collagen in parallel. All right, question two. Which tissue is best for storing energy? Think about it. Correct answer is adipose tissue, right? Since triglyceride is a high energy molecule, your fat tissue would be your storage tissue. All right, third question. Which cartilage is best for smooth surfaces? Think about it. Correct answer would be hyaline cartilage. This is the cartilage, of course, that has the uh, very thin fibers that you can't see. Uh, again, kind of like a Teflon coating at the end of your bones. All right, so that's it. Make sure you answer the quiz questions, and we'll see you guys in class.